So thank you for uh, coming to the session and we're about to start right now. We have uh, two speakers. So we'll start with Dr. Kamal Hamel. He's a professor of chemistry at the University of Bijaya in Algeria and editor of chief of the Algerian Journal of Na Natural Products. He is author, co-author of several scientific papers in international scientific journals. His scientific activities are focused on open access, open sciences, and the chemistry of natural products. He is also, as we all know him, the um, ambassador and managing editor of Duaj or Directory of Open Access Journals uh, for the MENA region. With that, I'd like to welcome Dr. Uh, Professor Kamal to the stage for his presentation. And as before, we'll have questions and answers in the end. I'll uh, straight. Mm -hmm. okay. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Walid. <laughs> so today we will speak about a uh, workshop in uh, scholarly publication uh, uh, with the advent of uh, artificial intelligence. So uh, as you know that uh, uh, the, uh, the new conversation uh, those days, uh, especially uh, uh, 11 months, uh, people speak about uh, uh, tools uh, used in artificial intelligence to provide more um, data, especially in in scholarly communication. So, uh, first we give a component of uh, scholarly communication, and also a, a component of open access uh, workflow, and we uh, also uh, some tools available used for uh, for uh, open access uh, workflow. At the end, we give uh, also the recommendation by UNESCO uh, launched only uh, uh, last month in September about uh, how to, to guide on uh, uh, general, uh, generative uh, artificial intelligence, uh, especially because there is a, a big issue regarding uh, copyright and ethic and uh, uh, other challenges and used uh, other uh, opportunities. So, um, of course, uh, I, the definition of uh, scholarly publication given uh, in uh, 2003 uh, by Association of Challenge uh, uh, and Research Library, uh, as indicated here. So, traditionally, the, the scholarly publication uh, has occurred in the formal literature, uh, journal archive, uh, uh, journal article, conference proceeding, uh, e-books, uh, books chapter, and uh, uh, many other. Um, so the, the 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 key component of scholarly communication can be uh, summarized in this uh, workflow. So we uh, we have a research data collection and analysis, and then. Uh, after collecting a uh, result, we can uh, authoring and uh, those uh, those can be uh, uh, written as a manuscript and sent to, uh, of course, for a review, uh, then publication and uh, discovery and dissemination. So it is, this is the uh, the common uh, component uh, of um, of scholarly communication. Publication and uh, more product uh, can in uh, an academic uh, many uh, many more product of academic inquiry uh, beside because uh, the, the conversation about uh, peer review uh, also model business model used in in scholarly publishing uh, can be discussed uh, more. Uh, of course, uh, in 2015 and uh, also uh, 2016, uh, there is a specialist in, in scholarly communication, uh, Jeron Bosman and uh, Bianca Kramer from uh, uh, Holland Universities. Uh, and then uh, they collect uh, the the tools used in in scholarly communication, uh, they so uh, they made a survey during one year, and then they collect many information uh, about uh, six hundred uh, tools used uh, uh, for um, 
innovative tools uh, and uh, uh, and site where uh, were seated in 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 scholarly uh, publication. So uh, this is uh, and uh, they uh, summarize the, the the workflow in six workflow in scholarly publication. So it. Uh, it was discovery, analysis, uh, writing, uh, publication, outreach, and assessment. So all those tools uh, contribute to a new uh, form of uh, scholarly uh, publishing. And uh, uh, those tools, uh, of course, contribute uh, actually to, to develop a new uh, uh, tools for artificial intelligence. Uh, scholarly communication in in transition mo mo mode because uh, there there are, there are in the past a uh, lot of uh, the, the discussion about uh, uh, the wide spectrum of uh, activity and uh, uh, broadly into into area so we have uh, publishing and uh, disseminating the the result of research uh, the first and then providing access to the the, publi uh, the published materials uh, the access to published material uh, has uh, a subject uh, for a lot of uh, discussion so we have uh, the, uh, the free uh, access open access and a uh, uh, lot of model uh, gold model uh, green model and uh, Actually, we discuss about uh, uh, diamond model, business model in uh, in access for uh, for publish. So, <clears throat> publishing environment is changing in many way because, uh, as uh, uh, in especially in in uh, in MENA region, North Africa and Middle East, we have a spe specific. Uh, I mean. Uh, uh, condition some tradition in uh, in uh, in scholarly publication and uh, the low quality and uh, the lack of uh, 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 maybe uh, communication because uh, our researcher prefer to 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 publish their uh, their uh, article in the north uh, for their consideration for their uh, visibility and. Uh, uh, they prefer uh, the the big publisher than uh, the, the local journal. The publishing environment is, uh, of course, uh, the changing, uh, especially in uh, uh, the, the 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 peer review, for example, the peer, the, the tradition, uh, the peer review process. So uh, it's uh, very important, uh, and uh, some discussion about. Uh, uh, sustainable or uh, open peer review and uh, 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 blind, uh, double blind. So many conversation uh, about uh, peer review. As you know, that uh, this uh, this job is uh, is uh, uh, realized by uh, volunteer because uh, uh, publishers send uh, send manuscript to to reviewer uh, and uh, this job. Uh, Done by uh, by uh, volunteering. However, many uh, publisher have uh, um, a big problem, especially with, uh, with this uh, this uh, this uh, area, because uh, um, sometimes take a long time to to to, to review articles. So uh, the 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 publication uh, takes uh, more uh, six months or sometimes uh, more than one year. Mm. The of course uh, concerning uh, a key component of open access uh, open access workflow. So as you know, that uh, is uh, this uh, workflow designed uh, to facilitate the, the publication and dissemination uh, research article, also data and other scholarly uh, materials uh, to wide audience without any. Fun uh, of course. Uh, any financial, but uh, this is uh, uh, not true because, uh, uh, of course, uh, if the, the journal is uh, without APC, uh, it means that uh, the institution or faculties, university can support uh, this uh, this uh, financial. Uh, 
So in 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 uh, open access workflow, we can uh, the the first uh, key component uh, very interesting is. Uh, how to uh, uh, the money uh, manuscript preparation so of course uh, the the researcher answer that their work meets the the standard uh, and the quality and the integrity because uh, as you know the, this uh, this model of open access uh, has uh, been uh, uh, parasited by uh, by uh, some uh, called uh, a predatory publisher and predatory journal. So uh, we have to 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 choose uh, or to uh, Doctor uh, Ahmed uh, talk about uh, about um, uh, the new. Uh, it's a new proposition that uh, the publication must must be uh, uh, integrated in uh, in some platform and uh, interested. Uh, 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 journal uh, published by a big publisher or uh, some uh, scientific. Of course, uh, the selection of open access journal uh, it's um, of course uh, it's uh, new and uh, how to choose between uh, the the journal and uh, where we can. Uh, look for the the, the the trusted journal we we have to to look for for example uh, some uh, some platform or uh, for example directory of open access journal has uh, um, celebrate uh, last week uh, about uh, 20000 uh, open access journal and in this platform is um, uh, there are about seventy percent, uh, seventy percent of uh, of journal without APC. So uh, more than 10, 000, uh, 13 thousand of journal are uh, without APC. So can this is a, a opportunity, especially for people from uh, researcher from Africa and uh, from. Uh, uh, Middle East can uh, can choose uh, from this platform uh, trusted uh, and uh, review the open access journal to to publish in the in those uh, those journals. So we have all uh, publisher like Wiley, um, uh, Springer, uh, Elsevier, uh, and uh, Frontier, MDPI, uh, and other. Of course, uh, there is a conversation about two. The last two uh, publisher uh, MDPI and also uh, Frontier, but um, uh, for example, in Indowaji, we have selected some journal from this. Uh, uh, they have uh, those two publisher have a predatory preview uh, uh, behavior, uh, predatory behavior, but uh, only for some journal we. Uh, 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 in last two or three months, we uh, some journal uh, were removed from uh, this platform, uh, and we find some uh, predatory behavior from those uh, those publisher. So uh, this is uh, an opportunity for, for example, for researcher to publish for free in this uh, in this platform. So we uh, author choose a reputable open access journal or platform to submit the, uh, their manuscript. Uh, the recommendation of, uh, of, uh, of, um, of uh, research in, in scholarly publication, I recommend that uh, the future is uh, to be for the platform for, uh, for, um, for uh, because uh, those platforms are trusted and uh, selected uh, according to some uh, uh, criteria uh, and uh, best practice in uh, in scholarly publication. Uh, of course, uh, about uh, submission and uh, peer review, uh, um, it's uh, very important uh, that uh, some uh, journal editorial team uh, Initiate uh, this uh, this uh, peer review, and uh, can be uh, choose uh, the peer review answer the integrity and the validity of research. It depend on the on the on the on the journal. Some journal prefer to 
uh, to open a review or a double blend, uh, blend peer review, editorial uh, review, uh, etc. So it depends on the uh, the speciality and the, on the field. Uh, of course, in the humanities, uh, they always prefer the, the editorial review than, uh, than a double blend or uh, uh, other uh, uh, other uh, peer review system process. Uh, of course, uh, I uh, we discuss uh, only a few uh, one hour be later, uh, before about uh, what is uh, free and uh, open. Uh, of course, open access is uh, wider than free. So the open access is, is uh, it means that uh, it's free but uh, immediate and uh, uh, can re reuse right availability online and uh, uh, can be uh, according to uh, to uh, all, uh, business model. Uh, it means that uh, uh, the open access, but uh, you have to pay or uh, diamond, uh, for example, diamond open access. Uh, it means that uh, the, uh, your uh, faculty university can pay for you and to publish it depending on the uh, publishing uh, models. Uh, other uh, thing in in uh, workflow, it's uh, license and copyright, and this is a very important thing because uh, uh, most of uh, Arab uh, from Middle East and North Africa, especially from Africa, uh, have they have a lack of. Uh, knowledge about license and uh, copyright so they don't uh, uh, difference uh, they don't know exactly they, they haven't a uh, knowledge uh, especially by using uh, those uh, creative comments of six uh, we have uh, cc by cc by nd cc by nd and uh, 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 not commercial so there is there are uh, uh, six uh, license so uh, the, for example, in the watch, we prefer those licenses to how to to share a, a publication, and also uh, the use of uh, copyright. Uh, uh, the the copyright can be uh, can be retained by the author or uh, transferred to the publisher or to the journal. So, those information is very important to to be listed in 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 the especially in in, in the in the journal. Uh, in journal policy, uh, of course, uh, the the article processes uh, charge is also uh, there are a lot of uh, the discussion about this uh, uh, this model because uh, uh, with the open access, uh, uh, many uh, publisher, uh, uh, especially during uh, COVID, where they shift for uh, uh, free open access, but in reality. Uh, um, it's only for a limited period. They ask for article publishing, uh, uh, then uh, uh, those uh, APC it, uh, can be uh, depending on the, the model of, uh, of the journal. Some journal with high impact factor, uh, they ask for, uh, for very high uh, uh, APC, for example, Nature, some article ask for uh, for ten thousand dollar. It's it's impossible for uh, researcher for MENA region can can pay this uh, this uh, this APC. So for uh, for us, the the business model as uh, diamond can be a solution for uh, yeah. Thank you. And uh, of course, uh, we discuss about uh, post publication uh, as a work uh, uh, to promote uh, uh, publication. So, uh, a rapid uh, development in artificial intelligence uh, can, uh, as you know, that uh, the Chat GPT launched only uh, uh, eleven months uh, and. Uh, uh, People start working on the, the, those those tools to be uh, um, used in 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 scholarly publication. So uh, 
Of course, machine learning and artificial intelligence uh, can be used to automate value aspects uh, of uh, open access uh, workflow. Uh, of course, uh, we can automate some, uh, for example, peer review, but uh, uh, for example, Elsevier uh, launched only last month uh, a policy about uh, peer review uh, and then uh, in their website uh, indicated that uh, uh, the, uh, the reviewer uh, is not allowed to use uh, those tools because some privacy, some uh, some e e e ethical uh, can be uh, not respected. So, uh, article uh, intelligence artificial can uh, can help to analyze uh, manuscript and detect, especially when we use uh, plagiarism, uh, for example, to check for plagiarism. And uh, this is also a big uh, issue in uh, in MENA region. Uh, uh, I received as uh, editorial in chef uh, a message last only last month, uh, last week, uh, from uh, the the manager of uh, Algerian scientific platform that you we have to stop to publish till we uh, give uh, some. Uh, 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 plagiarism checker for all uh, Algerian journal because uh, this, uh, especially with uh, the the event of um, of artificial intelligence, uh, people um, uh, researchers use, uh, for example, ChatGPT uh, to, to to write their uh, articles and uh, their manuscript. Of course, when uh, integrate uh, the the artificial intelligence, uh, uh, we need to uh, to answer the integrity and the art, uh, of course the um, the the use of human expertise so uh, the artificial intelligence can help to 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 accelerate uh, the, the the process but uh, you, uh, the, the the human expertise uh, need to be uh, a, 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 a uh, need to be uh, working with uh, with this uh, with this uh, those tool, uh, text meaning and data extraction. Uh, so uh, those uh, can be uh, uh, used uh, to identify trend and extra extract key funding. Uh, also uh, can enable uh, efficient data and uh, meaning and analysis. Language translation and accessibility. Of course, uh, artificial intelligence uh, can be uh, used uh, uh, more, uh, especially in uh, in uh, in translation. But uh, of course, the human expertise can can help to to correct because uh, um, some uh, some uh, website, uh, for example, people uh, integrate artificial intelligence in their. Uh, in their um, tools to 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 have and to to facilitate translation of a research article into different languages, so can accelerate the writing and metadata. Of course, uh, artificial algorithm analysis and enrich metadata of open access publication, and then can improve the uh, the discoverability of uh, of of research. Uh, preparent. It's also a new discussion because some people uh, can uh, can publish their article as a pip, uh, uh, parent uh, screening, and then uh, artificial and intelli intelligence can assist in screening uh, a preparent uh, for ethical concern and also error. Um, a content creation and recommendation. Uh, uh, of course, uh, can facilitate the access to diverse and uh, valued uh, research out output, promote also uh, interdisciplinary uh, collaboration uh, for this key of uh, recommendation for open access journal. Uh, open access journal. Uh, of course, uh, we consider factor like uh, topics relative to publication history and impact uh, and impact factor. Uh, it's uh, important uh, because, uh, as uh, now, uh, researchers look for uh, trusted journal and uh, with uh, with uh, uh, 
uh, impact factor. So uh, save the research time and uh, find best fit uh, 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 outlier for, for their uh, for their work. So benefit of uh, artificial intelligence in open access work. Uh, so can automate uh, automation of uh, article submission. Uh, also, we can use uh, tools for uh, peer review. But uh, as I told that. Uh, uh, the the human expertise uh, can ac accompany uh, this uh, this process to 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 uh, prove uh, the, this uh, uh, peer review, uh, advancing knowledge through a new discoverability. So there are several artificial uh, powered uh, tools available can uh, can help uh, automate value aspects of. Uh, open access workflow, including, uh, as I told, uh, article uh, classification, license detection, uh, APC detection, uh, also uh, APC level metrics and the right management, uh, especially about license and, and, and the copyright. So some artificial intelligence for uh, text ge generation and content can, uh, can in this in slide, uh, actually, uh, some researchers use uh, copy I and also uh, anywhere to, to uh, add on, at once Jasper, uh, read, uh, pseudo write. So those uh, tools can can help researchers to to write their manuscript. Of course. Uh, 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 the, those tools can help to to, to accelerate uh, the the manuscript uh, uh, writing. Uh, some tools like Tringa can help author improve the, the writing quality of their uh, manuscript. So can correct the grammar writing uh, uh, done right. Uh, of course, this uh, this tool is uh, for free, but there is a premium. Uh, um uh version uh, it's uh, it's not uh, not free because uh, um, they start with uh, with uh, those uh, those tools uh, and uh, of course uh, many company are uh, uh, looking to to have more uh, benefits uh, and use uh, those uh, uh, those uh, tools in Genie is also an uh, artificial intelligence powered academic writing assistant. So uh, they can help to 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 write your text and research uh, research paper. Uh, so writing, see it and edit uh, by using this uh, Genie. Genie is a tool. Uh, uh, only. Uh, Two weeks. Uh, there is also new uh, new tools. Is a consensus application can help to find a relevant paper in in a few minutes. So uh, evidence and best answer. So you you, you put uh, only uh, keywords and you can uh, have um, um, a summary of articles in in your field. So can help. Uh, researcher to to write very uh, very quick and uh, here we can give uh, some uh, a consensus verse, uh, versus versus uh, gpt and uh, and uh, you can see here uh, the question uh, can uh, zenk help uh, with the depression and uh, you can uh, here uh, see the 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 response of uh, chat gpt and uh, and uh, and consensus so this uh, this uh, also platform, uh, these tools uh, can help uh, a lot of uh, researchers to 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 accelerate uh, uh, writing their uh, their paper. Uh, of course, uh, uh, it's uh, not uh, uh, maybe the, in in uh, seven of September is uh, the uh, because there is a, a, a gap uh, and the issue about equity about. Uh, uh, about uh, some uh, some uh, some problem with uh, with uh, with uh, the the privacy. So guidance for a generative artificial intelligence, uh, especially in educa education and research. So those uh, recommendation uh, uh, towards human centered approach to to use uh, uh, generate because. Uh, 
some uh, some articles, some journal publish as author uh, ChatGPT, and uh, we received some some journal that uh, and that, uh, were rejected because uh, they the COP decided that uh, can cannot accept. Uh, uh, the uh, the artificial intelligence or ChatGPT as uh, as co-author because article uh, need to be uh, written by human. UNESCO first global guidance on generative artificial intelligence can be uh, summarized in those point. Maybe uh, uh, look into what the generative and how it works. Um, uh, presenting the diverse technology and model available. So no time to discuss this. Artificial revolution present its own uh, set of challenge and opportunity. So uh, uh, of course, uh, artificial intelligence offer involving uh, 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 collecting and processing a large amount of data uh, there is uh, the risk that this data will be uh, accessed by uh, around people or organizations. So more ticks because become automatic, especially in such industry, uh, marketing, and healthcare. So uh, you have to care about uh, privacy, about uh, uh, intellectual property, and also uh, uh, leading to, to privacy. So. Uh, of course, the, those tools are uh, help uh, researcher, especially in the scholarly uh, publishing. But uh, um, a publisher are uh, use those tools. Uh, be careful. So thank you very much for this. Is uh, the last one. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Professor Kamal, for this uh, very informative uh, uh, talk. And apologies for showing you like one minute, two minutes. <laughs> um, we will have the questions and answers uh, after uh, at the end of this. Uh, please welcome our next speaker, uh, Tatiana Sova. She's our neighbor from Qatar National Library. She's the director of the library at Carnegie Mellon University in Qatar. For over 25 years, she has been part of academic and special libraries in Europe, North America, and the Middle East. Her research interests and expertise lie in information and digital literacy, open access publishing, staff development, and library leadership. So please welcome uh, Tatiana on the stage. Thank you, Alvalid, and thank you for staying for the last session. So today I will be presenting institutional repository. So I'll be focusing on open access. And let me see, where is the pointer? Can you share me the pointer? So. Thank you. So this is the plan for my presentation. I'll put you into the context. We will speak about undergraduate research initiative, then how we preserve it. And I also speak about institutional repository and key benefits of it. Let me put you in the context. I come from Qatar. It's very interesting and unique educational environment. It's called Education City, and behind it is Her Highness Sheikh Moza. It's a vis very visionary project because on the 12 square kilometers um, surface, we have eight universities. And if you see, there are six American universities. So top tier American universities with best programs were brought to Qatar. And our university, which is Carnegie Mellon, is um, actually was open in 2004. It's co-education. And the program is very similar to what is in Qatar, Carnegie Mellon University in Pittsburgh. And um, we actually will be celebrating 20 years next year. We have at the moment 469 students and we have four majors. So our university is focused on teaching, but 
you understand, to get cream of the crop research, we need to start with the roots. And even though our university is only undergraduate program, we don't have graduate programs, we decided that as a university, we need to give exposure to our undergraduate. What is research? What is open access publishing? So there are several undergraduate programs that we have. The first one is Meeting of the Mind, and I'll be speaking a little bit more about it, which is Undergraduate Research Symposium. Then SURA, which is Summer University Research Apprenticeship, which means that students within five weeks take a course, they get credit for this course, and they also do faculty-led research. The next one is um, Qatar student initiated undergraduate research project, which means that students get funds and they pursue some research projects of their interest. And it's actually initial step for the senior thesis. And the last one is college honors, where students do their honor thesis and they are guided by faculty advisors. And it usually kind of finishes with honor thesis and sometimes they publish some articles. So undergraduate research symposium, which is an undergraduate research celebration of our student research output. It's held once a year, usually in May. And um, it's actually allows students who go through the whole research cycle that I show here uh, to represent the student initiated faculty directed research. We have students participating of all years of studies. Usually major, major presentation is from st senior students. And usually the research is peer reviewed. So they have exposure to the whole research process. Um, we don't ask them to publish something except to present the poster. It's low stake presentation because in May, they need to present their research that they've done in the form of the poster. They need to present it to the public and they also need to defend it to the jury of professionals that come from other education city institutions, not from the Carnegie Mellon, which means it's pretty high stake for them. So if we speak about numbers, we had 44 student participants. They presented 53 posters because sometimes they did individual posters, sometimes they did it as a group. And they had 39 poster judges and they also had winners. So it's kind of very, they have an incentive to do the best during this. So, Unfortunately, not all research is preserved. And in literature, I found that humanity research said that almost one third of materials are not findable anymore. And you can say that undergraduate research, it's almost non preserved. It's very difficult to find it. Uh, so there are some articles like I put here, scientific da data lost at alarming rate. And we found that with undergraduate research, research, we need to do something. Our university actually took control of it. And for many years, it was marketing departments that actually preserved research. What they did, they collected all the posters and it was a little bit unorganized. Sometimes they put it as e-album. So they described the event, they put posters there. So it's available online in PDF version. During COVID, they created a website where students, because they couldn't do it in person, they created some kind of videos. They show the poster and they comment on this. So we found it's really good because it's preserved, but it's not really very visible. And you know, the mandate of libraries is actually collecting, organizing, preserving, and providing access to information. So we decided to take over this responsibility. So you see that, um, unfortunately, it's not really visible here, but we decided that we actually have a paradigm shift for the libraries because before we were collecting but now we get the information organized and we disseminate it and that's why we decided to do it through institutional repository because we have a platform 
Institutional repository is um, a platform that a lot of universities use to actually organize and disseminate the scholarly output of faculty, students, and sometimes staff. So for us, it's a great pl platform to do it for the undergraduate research. Um, you understand that institutional repository always was geared more to faculty scholarly output, and usually it's article. But there's no incentive for many faculty to, first of all, publish it in open access and then take their precious time and put it in institutional repository. So presentation of faculty work is not very big. But we found actually a good niche for undergraduate research. And it's not only articles that can be presented there. For undergraduate research, before we used it for honor thesis, but now we decided, okay, we have posters and sometimes it's a video. Why not to do it? Our institutional repository is called Kilt Hub. You can see probably the Scottish roots of Carnegie Mellon. But Kilt Hub, it's actually on the platform Figshare. So it allows not only putting the text information, it allows to put multimedia, it allows to put codes. And library takes responsibility for stewardship of all records, whatever format they take. So the benefits, definitely openness. We want it to be open. We don't want any research produced at the university uh, behind the paywall. Then preservation. Really want to preserve it long term, so that in 20, 50 years, this work is still accessible. Curation. We want library specialists to look that everything is done according to the standards. There is a metadata assigned to it. Discovery. Um, what is good about institutional, re institutional repository is that all works that go there, they also crawled by Google, Google Scholar, Google Dataset in engines. So it's very visible. And impact. All work that is institutional repository has DOI, and students or anybody visiting these works can see how many views, how many downloads, and how many citations this work received. And definitely, like in any process, we have challenges. What are the challenges? Unfortunately, we can't make it required to deposit anything. So as librarians, we need really to promote it. We need to show the benefit, and that's why when we tried to kind of ensure the students do it, we didn't manage to have 100%, but we managed to capture a pretty good percentage of the work. And another thing is like being a big institution, we have certain specialists who are like responsible for it. And unfortunately it's on main campus. So we don't always have control what kind of information they do and the timeline when they do it. So, Knowing that faculty are busy, students are busy as well, we decided to make it as easy as possible for students. So we tried to streamline the process. So the whole process of um, meeting of the minds take about three months. So in February, students need to submit the abstract. In March, they need to already give the draft of the poster. Then faculty, not the faculty that mentors them, but other faculty reviews it. So we have peer review process. At the end of April, they submit the final posters. And in May, we usually have meeting of the mind. So when students are ready to submit their final posters, they need to do it through the Google form. So library decided to add a special section in the Google form where we ask them, do you want to submit it to the Kilt Hub? And if they say yes, we need to collect all the information which is required. What kind of subject area they want, what kind of keywords, small abstract, as well as they need to choose CC license. And this is introduction to different kind of licenses to them so that they understand that their work need to be reproducible, reusable. So that's their first introduction to CC licenses. Results, so uh, 38 students are out of 44 agreed to deposit the work, which is 86%, which for us, I think is a success. 
40, one post is uploaded. Again, some people did it individually and as a part of the group. That's why we have more posters than students. And uh, as you can see, most of them really chosen good licenses, not like copyright only. This is how it looks like on our institutional repositories. And you can see that you can briefly see at the top, you can probably see that we have CMUQ meeting of the mind that is a special group in our institutional repository, which belongs only to Qatar. And it's very important to have research from the region because in any area of studies, usually professors ask to find local data, local information. So this is contribution to the local science here. And when we have these presented here, you can see a title. And then if you go to certain poster, you can see a brief overview of it. If you click on it, you have the whole poster. You can also see on, on your right, you can see usage matrix. You can see how many views, how many downloads. And you can also use side button, which will give you DOI. And this DOI can be added to LinkedIn profile, any kind of electronic CV, so that they can really present it. Unfortunately, the event happened in May, but because of the delays, some vacations, the specialist on main campus managed to download only in September. But I actually did numbers from September 17th to October 15th. So it's less than one month. But I just want to speak about visibility of the research. Look at these numbers. Um, about more than 1,000 views for less than a month and 242 downloads. I understand like a little bit further, you can see that most of views were from United States, but Part of it was from Qatar. So um, I think it's a great success and it's a very good evidence of the impact of an, even of the undergraduate research. And now I just want to conclude about the benefits of it. So definitely we can see that not only faculty research, research need to be presented, but also we need to, to give the exposure of the research to the of the to the research process to undergraduate students because first of all it validates this research it gives actually um, some kind of inclusion um, in the scholarly communication in the process of the research and gives some kind of recognition to the work they are doing greater visibility you saw yourself that for less than one month, 41 posters had about more than 200 downloads. Definitely shows that um, it has global impact and it has, um, it contributes to the advancement of knowledge. Then build students awareness of open access because we definitely need to introduce them to philosophy of open access publishing. We need to uh, promote institutional repository and um, give them probably good habits that they can carry on in their life. Um, a lot of practicing researchers actually point out that undergraduate research was very critical in the professional success. And one of the anecdotal evidence, I spoke to biology professor and she said, when I teach students, there's a big difference which I see between students that took some undergraduate research and students that never had exposure to this. And then turn them into advocates of open research because by building good habits, we um, give them actually um, potential to move forward either in their careers or in the graduate studies. And um, they, they get the understanding of the process, how to do research and how actually to make it visible to others and how to participate in the research conversations from the very beginning. And definitely it boosts their career portfolio because um, 
Well, first of all, they probably get some kind of advantage when they apply for graduate studies. They also can share DOIs as well as metrics and the impact of the research with the future employers, with family members, and it actually can boost their um, chances finding the job and future success, graduate school or employment. And definitely there is a, some kind of a benefit to the university because first of all, we have visibility of the university, we kind of reiterate our commitment to the excellence and support of student research. And you know that with ranking, Universities are like in a sports world, we are competing with each other. So boosting the reputation of the university and attracting good faculty, good students is very important. And I just wanted to remind that yesterday, the provost of Khalifa University said very good phrase that great science transcends minds. So great science transcends minds. And I was thinking about it and I was thinking that the exposure of undergraduates to research and open access practices, it actually um, impacts their future. And instead, instead of taking kind of windy roads to the success, we kind of streamlined and show them more direct way to their future academic and work success. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you for the very interesting presentation. I mean, I wish I had my bachelor's thesis on other repository, but um, it's probably difficult to find a floppy disk or something right now and put it on. Um, do we have questions online? Um, so what I'll try to do is alternate between uh, questions from the audience and questions online. Um, maybe we can start from the audience here if anybody has a question. Um, maybe I can get... This two one here. Just an informational question, like that in the depositories, did you get evenly undergrad papers from different colleges or certain colleges were more prominently featured than some other colleges? Our repository is only for Carnegie Mellon. And in oh, Pittsburgh, we have no, different- by, by colleges, I mean faculties. We call colleges here. Okay. But I'm referring to faculties like social science versus natural science versus, you know, creative arts, whatever. For programs. For programs. Well, very good question because um, we have um, major in biology. They're very strong on research, computer sciences and information systems. They do a lot of research. Business, it's not required because they are more geared to commercial field. So research is not that important. So we have majority of research in biology and computer science. Business, one or two. Well, thank you. Well, uh, my question is for Dr. Kamal, but uh, very happy to know that you have launched this uh, uh, repository for uh, carrying a melon. Uh, my question about Doage. Uh, do you at Doage produce uh, a regular list of the removed journals? And how often do you evaluate uh, uh, journals? There? Yeah, there is a uh, uh, public, public, uh, public, public uh, list of uh, uh, indexed journal and in the meantime there is also uh, removed uh, uh, journal so those uh, removed journal uh, for uh, many reasons maybe uh, ceasing of publishing or disappear some uh, for example some journal they stop uh, publishing or they have uh, a predatory behavior so uh, uh, of course, you, uh, I can share with you the list of uh, 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 journal listed in in Doage and also the uh, journal removed from Doage. Okay, well, one more thing. Would you tell us a little bit about the Arabic journals that are indexed in Doage? The, the Arabic 
yeah. language journal. Uh, uh, there are many, uh, many uh, Arabic. Of course, uh, the, the problem with the with the visibility of Arabic journal. Uh, we made the statistic uh, only uh, last week, from two thousand. Uh, uh, 20 uh, 20,000 of uh, journals listed in 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 the Waj, only there are uh, about 200 uh, journal and from 200 journal uh, from uh, uh, north africa and the uh, middle east uh, maybe uh, only uh, 50 or say, 60 journals in in arabic language so uh, most of them are from uh, are from iraq from uh, uh, Syria and uh, someone from Algeria uh, and uh, Morocco. So uh, maybe the, the, uh, the big uh, issue with the, those journal, uh, they, uh, they have a, a problem with, uh, with, the, with the copyright and the, uh, policies uh, regarding copyright and the license. It's a big uh, issue for those. It's, uh, about 80% of rejection is uh, uh, the the lack of uh, information about uh, copyright and uh, and the license of the, those journals so of course we can uh, help uh, uh, those journals to be more visible uh, at uh, example um, from uh, uh, I, as I told you that uh, only uh, 200, but in reality, we make a uh, statistic uh, because uh, North Africa, we have uh, Algerian scientific journal platform. In this platform, there are about 800 uh, open access journal. And from 800 uh, open access journal, there are about, uh, uh, of course, 500 uh, journal in Arabic. So we can share with you the link for this platform. But from 800, only uh, 30 open access index in uh, in uh, in uh, in uh, in in uh, It's still very very few. The same for uh, Egyptian uh, uh, Bank of Knowledge. Uh, there are also about uh, 900 uh, the open access journal, but. Uh, only 140 journal indexed in uh, in, in the watch. So uh, still uh, maybe we can um, help uh, those editors, those publishers to be more visible. I am uh, available to to uh, make a webinar or seminar how to to uh, about uh, criteria. It's a very very basic criteria. Is uh, we. We ask for a very few criteria to be indexed. So uh, the, the the website uh, must be uh, detected for uh, the, the the journal, and uh, the we ask only for five article per 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 year, and also uh, policies regarding uh, copyright. Uh, best practice uh, uh, information about uh, APC. Uh, also, uh, um, a recommendation of COP and uh, manuscript uh, editorial board uh, and affiliation. It's very important uh, uh, information to be launched on the, on the website of, of the journal. So I am very happy to to share with you if uh, there, is, there, is, there are some journal interest to be quickly uh, indexed in this platform, uh, I can help. And uh, as you know that uh, actually, uh, if uh, the, the journal is indexed in the WAJ, uh, can facilitate, facilitate uh, very easy to, to be indexed in, in, uh, in Scopus. This uh, some, uh, one of the uh, question of uh, Scopus, uh, your journal is indexed in the WAJ or not? So can help more because uh, actually uh, uh, from two, uh, 20 thousand journal are uh, re peer reviewed and also trusted so uh, some uh, um, most of them are from indonesia indonesia about 2000 journal uh, uh, 
are from uh, Indonesia because there, there is a, a national policy. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Arabic world, uh, till now, uh, there is no national. Uh, some initiative, for example, in North Africa, uh, from our uh, Ministry of uh, Higher Education, uh, since last year, the, that uh, they adopted uh, zero paper. For example, now the dissertation or uh, um, PhD uh, can uh, only submit it, uh, the electronic uh, version and must de deposit in faculties and university. There is uh, every uh, university in Algeria, about 100 uh, universities are all uh, public, uh, must deposit their thesis, their article, uh, and uh, there are a group uh, actually working on uh, on uh, how to promote the ranking of uh, those university and uh, to give more visibility for uh, research and uh, dissemination. Right. Now we have a question here. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, let me thank both speakers for their presentations. Uh, my question is to Dr. Taitana, if I am not wrong in pronouncing your name. Um, the information you have given us about Qatar is very uh, impressive. Uh, also about the number of universities that you have there. Uh, your university is a research-based university, my understanding. Am I wrong, right that it's a research-based university, right? I wouldn't say so because it's research-based in university in US. The major mandate here in Qatar, it's mostly educational, like educating undergraduates, giving them degrees of Carnegie Mellon. But we, we live in the world where research is becoming more and more important. And after universities, they go to graduate degrees, they go in the world where research is very important. It's data-driven, so they need to understand data. They need to read research findings and understand that. That's why we decide to give exposure to research. But I wouldn't say so about our campus in Qatar. Uh, your campus in Qatar, but mainly the main campus, I think it's a research-based university. Yeah. Uh, our experience in my region, we just have one actually an institution which is specialized for research. The rest are academic universities where we are offering undergraduate programs. The question is here that, you know, after 20 years, you just have 460 students. In comparison to the rest of the universities in, the, in Qatar, might be you are equally having the same number of students. But don't you think that it's very hard to manage a university in particular, if you're focusing on research with 460 students, I know it's too costly to have a university after 20 years with 460 students. We don't focus on research. As yeah, I yeah, said. yeah. But yeah. even with that, even without research, having after 20 years, I mean, the question is here that it's a private university, it's a private campus, right? Mm -hmm. Getting, having 460 students for us, I know, because I'm the person responsible for giving license to the universities to be opened in the region. So all those universities who are, which have less than 1,000 students are always celebrating that are coming to my office. Do we need to increase our tuition fees? We can manage it. It's very hard for that. My question is there. After 20 years, you just got 460 students. Is it hard or easy to manage it with such a small number of students? Thank you. I think you're asking the wrong person this kind of a question. Because first of all, you need to understand the Qatar national vision. Qatar as a state would like to give top education to students without leaving the country and studying somewhere in US, in UK. So these universities were brought to Qatar to offer this education on the Qatar land. And the numbers, well, it depends, but it's like you're speaking about business models and I'm speaking about education. And 
how we try to provide quality education plus, plus quality experience. So maybe it's a question to other people, and <laughs> I know at least a couple <laughs> here that probably can have a conversation with you after this session. Thank you very much. We have a question. Yeah, yeah, just uh, yeah. Uh, we have just a comment. Maybe a comment from him, and then. Well, the whole concept, first of all, Carnegie when I, when I is not working alone there. It's a campus of several universities together in one place, okay, with one higher administration, with everything. It's seven schools, number one. Number two, as she said, is quality. There are schools where medicine, they have 1,000, 1,500 in a batch. And in America, as I know, it doesn't exceed 550. Even at the university, they have 130,000 students. The medical school is only 50. They don't go high. So it's a matter of a quality high. Number three, if you look at the population of Qatar and the number of students, you will see the ratio is much higher than any place okay. <laughs> in the world, okay? Because you're living in a small country, okay? And if you, I mean, she didn't say it. number of Qatar even are small in those institutes. But it's all reflected because of the number of the population. We cannot do anything. I cannot make the population big so that the university become big. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Thank you very much, Dr. Fali. One something for all the universities. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I. Yeah. And. Uh, that's yes. Want to something? And we have three thousand five hundred students, all in all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just uh, we have a question. And... Uh, that's the question. It's a comment, uh, yeah. and uh, I just congratulate uh, University of this uh, for this idea, which is I think confirms what we said in this uh, morning event uh, that we, we 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 try to encourage students to enter the research. Uh, domain and I think it's a really good uh, experience that you you, you, you did. Uh, I just want to question for you, uh, Mr. Kamal. You talk about uh, machine learning uh, and you know th this is the mode uh, uh, right, uh, right now. Uh, machine learning depends a lot, uh, the models of the machine learning depends a lot on the training session. So I think we should uh, be careful when using machine learning models to evaluate open source uh, articles, uh, especially if these uh, models are were trained uh, elsewhere and we'd like to apply, apply these uh, models on our uh, area. Thank you. In, uh, in uh, UNESCO recommendation, but uh, the, there is a big issue about uh, uh, equity uh, about uh, ethical and uh, also uh, privacy and uh, uh, about uh, uh, because for example uh, when you use uh, tools uh, artificial intelligence or uh, uh, machine learning for uh, for uh, for to for peer review for example and uh, your article is not accept your manuscript not article your manuscript is not accepted so uh, uh, big issue because uh, the problem is can can other uh, person because uh, artificial intelligence is based on on data set so they collect through word uh, information and then uh, they give uh, those information and don't attribute uh, the copyright for uh, for such, uh, uh, of course, big issue and big discussion. Uh, only last uh, last uh, last month in 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 Mexico, there there were there was a, a big summit is uh, about Creative Commons and uh, artificial and the use of uh, artificial intelligence. And uh, of course, uh, there are some people are uh, encouraging and. Uh, uh, need to speed the, the, the use uh, of those tools, but uh, other are uh, 
against uh, and to be very careful uh, using those tools, uh, uh, in, uh, especially in, uh, for example, in uh, some uh, uh, scholarly uh, publish, uh, publishing and the workflow of, uh, of access. Uh, and yeah. Thank you I much. confirm, yes, it's a big problem. Thanks. I mean, I also want to ask if AI will ever replace publishers, but I think that's a very difficult question or answer. We have we have a question. In the back. Yes. Um, uh, thank you, uh, both speakers. And uh, this is a question for Dr. Kamal. I mean, we had the discussion last year, and uh, there's no doubt there's a lot of challenges here in the MENA region when it comes to open access and duaj and the standards or the criteria that we have to meet to actually. Uh, fulfill the actual journal. So at the UAEU, we have uh, several journals that are published on our repository. Um, however, the issue of getting them registered with Duaj is one of them, the open access policy that is not visible on our website. So while we publish, it's not really fitting into the criteria of Duaj. So is there kind of any uh, possible, possible way where now we can, with this forum, things like this, to actually send a message out that uh, the open access policy is beneficial now of some in some form or shape to be publicized on, on our web pages. I know many universities don't even have these policies, but it's kind of a bit of a dichotomy for us when we have to get the open access policy out, but at the, and we can't, but we have a really good quality journal ready to go, but it's just lacking in, in some areas that is bureaucratic rather than uh, impacting the actual quality of the journal. So I, I don't know, do you, are there any plans or, because uh, we were supposed to perhaps meet and discuss this to see whether there's a methodology that we can approach, uh, you know, getting kind of a draft format of an open access policy or a frame, framework that is acceptable that we can publicize. Um, just your thoughts on that. Uh, the open access policy uh, adopted by uh, Doaj is inspired from uh, initiative of, of uh, Budapest. Uh, this is uh, the first question when we uh, we start uh, uh, filling the, the, the application. So if you your response is no, you cannot continue the, 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 the application. Uh, if uh, the application is uh, was rejected, you can uh, apply for free uh, after. Of course, uh, uh, we uh, we ask for uh, six months. Uh, but uh, uh, if um, uh, things are corrected and put on the website, uh, some missing information regarding uh, open access uh, uh, policy, we can help to to, to reduce this period for uh, one month, two months, and. Uh, we accelerate the, the, the process of indexation. So, uh, of course, you can contact me and then you can help, of course. Thank you. Thank you very much. We have a question in the back. Uh, actually, it's, uh, I just want to share some information with uh, the audience since we are talking about uh, digital repositories and uh, local data. I'm Shadan Ran from uh, Kuwait, uh, from Kuwait Institute for Scientific Research. And I would like to share that uh, the information that we have actually a digital repository for all the research work uh, at KISSER, which is uh, uh, an output of all the projects being done uh, by uh, KISSER researchers. Uh, it's an applied uh, research. So it's uh, all the research or all the projects are done with clients, either government or uh, uh, private sectors. And this is uh, actually, I can say, it's the first attempt to collect local data because uh, we found that uh, uh, the, the data is going either to be lost uh, since Kisser established 1976. And uh, we had two major objectives of this uh, uh, project that to make the uh, all the research outputs available to the public uh, the scientific research community or any uh, interested uh, body. Uh, of course, we have security levels for the different uh, research. We have confidential restricted in general, but at least for the confidential and restricted, there is uh, metadata and abstract, and it can be open for the interested parties after the permission of the 
uh, division or the project leader of that research. So uh, it's if you are interested, it is kdr.edu.kw, and you're most welcome to get into it. And you can actually download some of the uh, data if you want if you want there is data uh, available local data and uh, we don't encourage the reproduction of the report and uh, we just encourage that the researcher will look into it and choose whatever data he needs or uh, results they want and then they download it to uh, their uh, their computers so um this is the first phase that to uh, put the intellectual property of Kisser in it. And the second phase is going to Kuwait as government and private sector to include all the local data. We are very interested in local pro produced data in Kuwait because we know there's no other place that has this data. If we don't collect it and preserve it digitally, so after 20 years, we can go back and get the data if something goes wrong. So I just wanted to share this with you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, do you have any more co comments or questions from the audience? Um, I mean, we have a bit of time, so I do have some questions for <laughs> our speakers. I'll start with Tatiana. Uh, this is a very technical thing. I mean, you mentioned licenses, the CCBY and the CCBY and C. Was there a reason for giving the, the students a choice or w w what was the thought process behind that? Well, first of all, we saw it as an educational opportunity. We gave definitely link to all licenses. We said which would be probably preferred, but also said, if you don't want to choose license, it will be in copyright. And actually about two students chosen not to have CC license, but have copyrighted materials. So just educational. Thank you. I think a lot of publishers would like that. It's all about author's choice, right? So um, and I have a question for Dr. Uh, Professor Kamal. Um, so setting up local publishers or local publishing is difficult. And uh, we've mentioned the different cases from different countries in the Arab world. What's interesting about Indonesia is that they have like 2,300 journals. You mentioned they have a national policy, but is there anything else that's behind kind of the success story of Indonesia, like business models or platforms or anything that you have can give us insight into? Yeah, of course, they take uh, initiative and they launch uh, the national policy of, um, of uh, open access. So uh, uh, Ministry of Higher Education uh, promote and uh, fund those journals. But uh, science last year, I think they stopped uh, the, the, the funding. So uh, ah. at the beginning, all the journal are, are free of charge. The APC is zero. And they put, uh, if you look uh, information, uh, the page, and you can find a li uh, like account and the zero, zero APC. And then after uh, six months of indexing, those journal, we find that uh, those journal led uh, because the, the funding is uh, the, 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 the Ministry of Higher Education uh, stopped the funding those journal because, uh, of course, uh, some publisher start uh, predatory behavior. So they uh, classify those journal in, uh, in many uh, categories. And uh, to get the funding, you have to be uh, uh, some specific criteria. Most of those journal cannot be identified in those uh, those criteria, and uh, the the ministry stopped uh, funding. And then uh, those journals uh, start uh, uh, applying uh, APC. Of course, it's a very good initiative uh, in uh, in uh, Latin America. Also the, in Brazil, uh, uh, initiative in, the, in this way uh, and a uh, lot of uh, open access uh, emerged in this, uh, in this region. But uh, of course, uh, Arab world can, uh, can uh, by funding or uh, by uh, looking for uh, sustainable uh, infrastructure or uh, funding from uh, 
some private uh, company or foundation can help. Uh, and uh, now the, the conversation uh, is uh, uh, to adopt uh, diamond uh, models. Uh, this uh, diamond is uh, very, uh, I think, very suitable for uh, MENA region. Uh, of course, you cannot, uh, a researcher cannot pay uh, more than uh, $50 or $100. Of course, uh, uh, the support uh, can from, from uh, the university or foundation or some uh, organization uh, to support uh, this uh, this uh, open access models. So, uh, of course, uh, uh, this uh, this uh, model of uh, Indonesia can be uh, uh, used for uh, Arab world. Thank you, Professor Kamal. I think we're about to end here. I mean, we had two different kind of um, look or uh, perspectives on open access from the journalist perspective and the policy perspective. Maybe next year, hopefully, that we can have possibly a workshop on how to get listed in DOAJ. Maybe we can invite journal editors. That would be nice. And maybe also a track on repositories. Um, I think that would be nice to see in future events. And I'm sure there'll be a lot of uh, interest in both uh, tracks.